In this video, you will learn how incremental conductance MPPT control is implemented in MATLAB through block logic. The photovoltaic system used for this simulation consists of a 10 cross 3 PV array and a DC to DC boost converter with resistive load. This array delivers 6 kW at MPP and standard testing conditions. Maximum power voltage and current of PV array are 263 volt and 22.8 ampere respectively at standard testing conditions. The PV array's detailed specifications are shown on the screen. The boost converter's input capacitor is of 5 mF, inductor is of 2.5 mH, output capacitor is of 250 microfarad, and load resistance is of 200 ohms. The design of boost converter for PV system is a lengthy process and has already been covered in a separate video. The link to that video has been provided in the description. The controller for the photovoltaic system senses the voltage and current of the PV array, processes them using the incremental conductance MPPT algorithm and produces a duty ratio. First, let me add all the components required for the block logic from the library browser. Then I'll describe each component and show you how to set up the control circuit. We will choose the following blocks from the library browser for the control circuit. A constant block, a switch, a memory block, ABS or absolute block, subtract block, add block, compare to constant block, relational operator, product block, divide block, saturation block, scope, and PWM generator. To implement incremental conductance algorithm, we will follow the flowchart shown on the screen. The concept of this algorithm and flowchart has already been covered in a previous video. Instantaneous values of arrays voltage VA and current IA are sensed by the voltage and current measurement blocks respectively. We will use product block to multiply VA and IA to calculate arrays power PA. The purpose of memory block is to store the instantaneous value of signal for one simulation step. We will use memory blocks to store the instantaneous values of VA and IA. In the next simulation step, these stored values of VA and IA are subtracted from their instantaneous values to calculate delta VA and delta IA respectively. Next, we will check whether delta VA is equal to zero or not by using the absolute and compare to constant blocks. The absolute block computes the magnitude of VA and compared to constant block compares the absolute value of delta VA with zero. If absolute value of delta VA is greater than zero, then comparator's output is logic one or true, otherwise it is logic zero or false. We will use output of this comparator as control signal for switch blocks. Before that you should understand the working of switch block. The two inputs at the top and bottom sides are data lines and the input in the middle of the switch is a control line. When control line is logic zero, data at the bottom terminal appears at output terminal of switch. When control line is logic one, data at the top terminal appears at output node of the switch. So when this control signal is logic one, it means that delta VA is not equal to zero. Therefore, delta VA is passed to this divide block through the switch, which is also connected to delta IA and incremental conductance that is delta IA by delta VA is calculated through this circuit. If delta VA is equal to zero, then we cannot calculate incremental conductance and simply one is passed through the switch to the divide block, which then gives the output delta IA. We will also calculate negative of the conductance that is minus IA by VA. Then we will check whether incremental conductance is greater or less than the negative of the conductance by using a relational operator block. If it is greater, then output of this block is logic one otherwise logic zero. Now to increase or decrease the duty ratio, we will use two more switches. We will use output of compare to constant block as control signal to one switch and output of relational operator block to another switch. In case when delta VA is equal to zero, we will make the decision on the basis of value of delta IA. 
when delta i is equal to 0 it means we are at mpp therefore we do not need to change the duty ratio but if it is not equal to 0 then we can either increase or decrease the duty ratio as shown on the flow chart so whenever value of delta v is equal to 0 we will keep positive perturbation that is plus 0 0.01 for this purpose we will use a constant block which stores the value of positive delta d. When delta va is not equal to zero then we will make the decision on the basis of output of relational operator block. If delta ia by delta va less than minus ia by va then we will keep positive perturbation that is plus 0 0.01. If delta ia by delta va greater than minus ia by va then we will give negative perturbation that is minus 0.01. Saturation block is used to limit the duty ratio between 0 and 0 0.85. A memory block is used to store the instantaneous values of duty ratio which is added to the delta D in the next simulation step to calculate new duty ratio. The duty ratio produced is passed to the PWM generator. Switching frequency of PWM generator is set to 25 kHz. This PWM signal is connected to the MOSFET switch of the boost converter. To display the graphs of VA, IA and PA, scopes are used in the circuit. Now we will run our simulation. This is the graph of array power. You can see in the signal statistics window that mean array power in steady state is 6000 watt, which is the maximum power point of the PV array. Similarly, values of array voltage in current in steady state are 263 volt and 22.8 ampere respectively. This shows that our incremental conductance algorithm is working perfectly. This was a tutorial of how to implement block logic of incremental conductance algorithm. If you have any queries then you can ask in the comments. Please subscribe to my channel and see you in next video.